What's going on everyone? Phil here for KO Gaming. This past weekend, I had the opportunity to play through the new Far Harbor DLC expansion for Fallout 4. Now, if you haven't been following along, Bethesda has been advertising this expansion as the largest expansion ever in the Fallout franchise, including all of those DLC expansions for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. So that's some pretty big shoes to fill, considering some of those expansions were pretty lengthy. But... Does length equal quality? And that's what we're about to talk about in this mini review. Upon installation and activation of the Far Harbor DLC, you'll get an in-game prompt signifying that there's a new case for you to investigate at Nick Valentine's detective agency. Upon arrival at his office, his secretary Ellie will fill you in with the details. A girl has gone missing and her parents have contacted Nick in order to find her. You'll then be traveling to an area far northeast of the map of Fallout 4, which previously was not accessible. You'll meet the Nakanos, a couple who are very distressed about the disappearance of their daughter, Kasumi. Upon some initial investigation, you'll determine that she's actually traveled to Far Harbor. You'll use the father's boat in order to travel to this new island community, of which is a giant new map addition to Fallout 4, including various different locations, enemy types, and quests all on their own. After a short boat ride, you'll arrive at Far Harbor, a maritime shoreline community that's immediately attacked by a bunch of mutated amphibious creatures. After a brief fight, you'll learn a little bit more about the townspeople, and you're off. It's totally up to you whether or not you'd actually like to speak to each townsperson to get their story, find out a little bit more about the island, or if you'd just like to run off to the island and explore for yourself. Warning, the entire island is covered in a thick and dense fog, which is very radioactive, and Far Harbor actually is one of the most radioactive parts of the game. I actually found myself using tons of Radaway and Radex over the course of this DLC, because the radiation levels were almost constantly increasing, and a lot of people seemed to find that annoying, being that I've already finished the entire campaign of Fallout 4 and had tons of meds just saved up for this occasion, I didn't really find it too much of a hassle, but I could understand if other Others might. The cool thing about the Far Harbor expansion is that it's completely open world. Unlike some previous expansions from the Fallout franchise, this one is not very linear. You are free to explore the entire island of Far Harbor from the very get-go. However, if you don't talk to critical people and get NPCs to activate quests for you, a lot of these areas are going to seem pretty empty because you're not able to find the critical quest item or maybe the person who you should be searching there for. So it really does behoove you to talk to the people to get the quests activated before you really set out. As for the theme of Far Harbor, well, I sure hope that you like fishing, because everything in this DLC has this northeastern United States, New Englandy harbor town kind of vibe, including all the new armor pieces, weapons, and enemies are all going to have this fishing style theme. Whether it's the harpoon gun, a giant harpoon launcher that has a chance to instantly decapitate an enemy, or a giant fish hook which you can use for melee attacks, new enemy types such as the gulper, this mutated and Amphibian, or the angler, which kind of looks like a variation of a merman and a fish, and of course, the huge giant hermit crab, which serves as kind of a mini boss fight. Everything here has to do with that kind of theme, so if it's not your cup of tea, eh, well, you're just gonna have to put up with it. Without too many story spoilers, because I obviously don't want to give everything away, there are three major factions that take residence on Far Harbor Island. Of course, in true Fallout 4 fashion, they all hate each other and all think that they have a stake to the island and that the other two factions should be eradicated. It's going to be up to you to make friends with the different people in these factions through doing various quests, some of which will be repetitive fetch quests, some of them will be looking for a missing person from that faction, and sometimes you just need to say the right thing to the right person at the right time in order to hear that ding and complete the quest. Once you get a little bit more affinity with all of these factions, you're going to have to realize that probably not all of them are going to be able to coexist, and it's going to be up to you to either try to make peace or eradicate them per your own personal choice. One major tip I'll give you if you plan on playing this DLC, bring Nick Valentine with you because one of the factions actually has some really interesting personal history with him and you definitely don't want to miss out on the little bit of additional dialogue and information about his backstory that you will get if you take him. Definitely it's worth your time. 
Now, unlike the previous two Fallout 4 expansions, this one isn't like a one-trick pony. You know, that Automatron DLC was more about just building a robot companion. The Wasteland Workshop was just about doing things at your workbench. This one just feels like a more natural expansion to the gameplay of Fallout 4, almost like an additional side campaign to the main story. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing, especially if you enjoyed the open-world exploration, the VATS and first-person shooting combat, the constant dialogue challenges, the, the quest trees and everything that was a great part of the original campaign of Fallout 4 is pretty much the main focus of this DLC. But in a lot of ways it could be a double-edged sword because Unlike some previous DLCs for Fallout games, this one really fails to innovate in any significant way. In fact, the only way that this DLC innovates is that at one point you have to do this kind of puzzle minigame using gameplay mechanics from the Workbench Workshop building, and it really feels almost out of place. As I was doing this for about an hour, there's five different puzzles that you have to solve. It really felt like a combination of Portal, Minecraft, and the Talos Principle. And after I was done with it, I was like, I mean, it was interesting and different, but it really did kind of feel out of place in a Fallout game. And the fact that it really does take a little bit of thought to figure out these puzzles, if you're not a fan of that kind of gameplay, you might say, why the hell do I have to finish this in order to continue on with the DLC? It could be pretty frustrating. But other than that, Everything you do in Far Harbor is pretty commonplace for Fallout 4. Nothing innovates, you're not in any kind of an amazing new area that's breathtaking, and I'd say with the exception of one mission where there's a little bit of a supernatural aspect to it, everything here is pretty much par for the course. Find this missing follower, go fetch me this from this warehouse, go do this and do that. It's pretty much wash, rinse, and repeat for the Fallout franchise, so if you really liked the core gameplay of Fallout 4, you may really like Far Harbor, but if you were looking for something different or a little bit more interesting of a twist, you're probably not going to get it here, and considering the amount of hype that Bethesda put behind the game, you may find it a little bit underwhelming. Speaking of that hype Bethesda put behind this expansion, I certainly didn't measure every little inch of the landmass of the Far Harbor map, but I can tell you it is a lot of locations, a lot of content, and a lot of missions. In fact, I was level 50 when I started with this DLC, and at the very end I actually hit level 60, so it takes a lot of experience points to level up once you hit the high levels of Fallout 4, so that should give you a little bit of an idea of just how much there is to do in this expansion. My actual playthrough, which included every major mission on the island of Far Harbor, as well as some open world exploration looking for some extra goodies, lasted around 14 hours. Obviously, dependent on how much attention to detail you spend, how much you like to free roam, and how many of the side missions you decide to do, I could certainly see your playthrough being anywhere from between 10 to 15 hours. So it is pretty lengthy, but some people may be deterred by the price tag. Unlike the previous DLCs, this one is a whopping $25 if you didn't previously buy the Season Pass expansion. $25 for a DLC is pretty pricey in this day and age, especially since this is only the cost of this single expansion, not another grouping of Season Pass, so you may want to be a little bit apprehensive, especially, again, if you were looking for something innovative or something different, a new spin to the Fallout franchise, you're not going to get it with Far Harbor, and you might find it a hard sell. And so I really think that the divisive factor between whether or not you're going to want to play Far Harbor or not is going to be whether or not you were a huge fan of the original Fallout 4 gameplay, because it really does feel like more of the same. So if you're looking for an additional 10 to 15 hours of gameplay for the Fallout 4 formula, this is going to be right up your alley. But if you were looking for something more innovative, probably not. One final thing I do want to mention is that this DLC does contain the most powerful armor that's not power armor in the entire game. So if you're looking for a really strong armor set, this is going to be the DLC that you want to play because it has it. Outside of that, none of the items in this DLC are really groundbreaking. I mean, the harpoon gun is incredibly slow, and after using it for a while, I decided just to get rid of it because my other weapons were so incredibly better than it. There is one melee weapon, a sledgehammer with a radiation effect that seems really strong, but my class was not a melee build, therefore I really couldn't utilize it. I gave it to Nick Valentine, and he decided to hammer on bosses with it, which was pretty cool, but outside of that, there's not much else to really talk about in the DLC. So, I enjoyed it, but if you're looking for something innovative, you're probably going to find it underwhelming. However, I was a fan of the original Fallout 4 game. I mean, hell, it was my Game of the Year pick for 2015, so I did enjoy this expansion. 
Well, that's it everyone. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please consider giving it a like here on YouTube, as well as checking the video description where you'll find many links, including one to my raw playthrough of the Far Harbor DLC over on my gameplay channel DSP Gaming. You'll also find a link to my Amazon Associates account, as well as to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time for another review.